From an evidence-based medicine standpoint, it is really hard to find any justification for the use of an NG tube. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the evidence for NG tubes in bowel obstruction. And it's probably going to be a short video because there ain't much evidence, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Welcome back to First 10 EM. I love doing deep dives into the evidence. That's probably the core of First 10 EM and my career. So if you subscribe to the channel, you can expect a lot of digging under the surface, looking at the science that underlies our day-to-day -day practice. Now, as compared to most topics that I've covered in the past, NG tubes are really hard to discuss. The most recent video I put up was on a discussion of IV versus oral antibiotics, and there were dozens of RCTs. And if you haven't seen that video, oral is at least as good as IV in every case. But when it comes to the use of NG tubes in small bowel obstructions, there is not a single RCT in the history of medicine, not one proper trial looking at this intervention. And that just, it blows my mind, especially when you consider how common this procedure is and maybe more important, how strong the opinions are around this procedure. I don't know what it's like where you work, but Everywhere that I work, the first words out of the surgeon's mouth when I call about a bowel obstruction are something along the lines of, this patient needs an NG tube now, before they come to the floor, put it on in while they're still in the emergency department. I can't tell you how many times that I've been yelled at because a patient declined to have an NG tube in the emergency department. And to be fair, this I think has gotten a little bit better over the last five years. I think our younger surgeons are maybe hip to change, but a lot of people get really worked up about this. They talk about it like it's a life-saving procedure and there's not a single RCT to support the practice. Now, of course, RCTs are our best form of evidence, but they're not our only form of evidence. So we can look at some observational data. And even here, for such a common procedure, it is very weak. There are two chart reviews. That's it. That's literally all that we have to work with. And the chart reviews tell us, despite the strong opinions that I have encountered, a significant proportion of patients with small bowel obstruction are managed without an NG tube. It was 20% in one study, 50% in the other. So a large percentage of patients seem to get by without ever having an NG tube. Not using an NG tube is clearly part of the standard of care if surgeons are taking that approach in up to half of patients. And it turns out in both studies, NG tubes are associated with worse outcomes, longer time to resolution, longer length of stay, higher complication rates. Now, those are associations. They'll have a lot of confounders. We have no idea why NG tubes were put in some patients and not in others. And it probably makes sense, right? It makes sense that NG tubes would be reserved for the sickest patients. This could easily be overruled with a single high quality RCT, but as it stands, the best available evidence, really the only available evidence, suggests that NG tubes are associated with worse outcomes. Now, if you want to extrapolate from other data, NG tubes have been studied in post-op patients for post-op ileus. That's not exactly bowel obstruction, but I think there's probably some crossover, at least enough that it will allow us to hypothesize about the value of NG tubes in bowel obstruction. So there's a systematic review from all the way back in 2005, looking at 28 RCTs, 4,000 patients, and the outcomes were worse across the board with NG tubes. It took longer to get back to normal bowel functions. There was more complications and these were RCTs. So we're no longer talking about weak associations with lots of confounders. NG tubes cause worse outcomes. Again, I don't know how well this translates to bowel obstruction, but it's not reassuring. If NG tubes make outcomes worse 
in post-op Ilius, I think in, in post-op Ilius, I think our baseline hypothesis would be that they probably make outcomes worse in bowel obstruction too, right? That makes sense to me. There's enough physiologic overlap to extrapolate, especially in the context of zero RCTs and harms shown in the two observational trials that we do have. Now, of course, there's a lot of uncertainty here, but there's one thing that we know for sure about NG tubes. They are painful. They are often rated as among the most painful things that we do to patients. In this one survey of inpatients who had undergone a variety of procedures, the NG tube was rated as the most painful thing that we do. It was given an average of 8.8 8 out of 10 on a pain scale. It was rated as more painful than mechanical ventilation than central lines and art lines than Foley catheters. So one thing that we can be absolutely sure of when it comes to NG tubes, there is clear harm. And when we're causing harm, when we're causing our patients pain, we really need to have a justification. We need to have a proven benefit. And so the utter lack of evidence for NG tubes is very concerning to me. Despite the paucity of RCTs, I think this is a very easy practice change. There is clear harm. There is not a shred of evidence of benefit. It is really, really hard to make an ethical argument for putting patients through this procedure, potentially the most painful thing that they will experience while they are in hospital, when there is absolutely no evidence that it helps. So I think this one's easy. Get off the fence. Just stop placing NG tubes in these patients. And if you work in a place where your surgeon is really insistent, at least have a shared decision-making conversation, informed consent with your patient. That's going to sound something like, look, this is a very painful procedure with no evidence of benefit. And then you let the patient decide. Now, I'm interested to hear arguments, comments, any literature that I might have missed. Leave it all down below. If you're interested in more evidence-based reviews, there are plenty in the works, so make sure you subscribe. Until next time, take it easy.